Now, Michael, you're out in the Phoenix market. Talk to us a little bit more about, uh, just give us kind of a quick background on your uh, experience in the mortgage industry, just so people have an understanding of your background and uh, if you're a broker or banker, and then uh, tell us a little bit more about how you've leveraged this marketing campaign. Well, I work for a broker. I've been in the business since uh, 2001, January of 2001. Um, you know, this the response that I've gotten off this has been phenomenal. Uh, well over 50 calls. I have 12 loans in process now. I'm working on another, I'd say, 12 to 15 that are in various stages. Some I've already sent out disclosures to. They just haven't emailed them back or faxed them back yet. Um, and they've all been Fannie Mae loans, so that guarantee certainly stands. Uh, I haven't got anyone that uh, has called me on a non-Fannie loan, that's for sure. Yeah, what are what are some of the borrowers looking like in terms of loan amounts and credit scores? I mean, uh, understanding that they're all Fannie Mae owned, but what's the quality of the incoming call? Well, I had... Loan amounts of over 200000 is what I requested. I didn't want to go down as low as the one fifty, um, And it, almost everyone has had 720 or better FICO scores. And, and I would say the vast majority are probably 770, 80 FICO scores. Uh, here in Phoenix, they're you know, anywhere from 180 to 300% LTV. And CLTV. Um, I got docs on my first deal on HARP yesterday. Uh, they signed, no problem. And I should have docs on probably another three or four over the next week. What and kind of rates are these people done. paying, Michael? Hey, Michael, what kind of uh, rates are you, are you seeing that these people are paying? They've, they've had these mortgages for a few years, right, prior to 09. So are they coming in at five and a half, six, six and a half? I mean, what are you, just kind of all over the board, I imagine, but. Yeah, the majority are five and a half or higher. Uh, I've, I've had quite a few at uh, six and a quarter, six and a half. Uh, one, I think, was even over seven. Um, right. I have had, I think I had three that were at 4.875, so really couldn't do too much for them, considering, you know, the lenders have their own adjustments. And so the rates for them are, you know, four and a quarter, four and a half. At 4.875, it didn't make a whole lot of sense for them. But I've had a lot of people that wanted to go to a 20-year fix. And there were even a few that have gone to a 20-year fix uh, that were under the 125, and I was able to get 3.99% on a 20-year fix. So, you know, some of these people are going from their 30 down to a 25 or 20 and HARP really likes that too, right? Years. The whole the whole HARP program yeah. is all about lowering their terms. So if you're doing that, you might get a little bit better approval ratio on your DUs, right? When you're taking I, I do. Term down. As a matter, of, yeah, I've I've had a couple that uh, I either got a refer with caution or one of the levels on a 30 year. Once I switched it to a 25 or even a 20, I was able to get either a better level or even an approve eligible. I oh, that's a hot DVD. tip right there. I, I didn't even realize that, yeah, changing the term. I for, kind of forgot about that until we just started talking about it. Lowering the term could get you a, a DU approval instead of the EA1 or 2, right? That's yeah. interesting. And yeah, talk a little bit running. more about the, uh, the, the timeline on how long you think this heart thing is going to last. I mean, are you seeing much competition in the market? Are, you, are your clients rate shopping you at all or saying that somebody else is calling them? Or what are you seeing out there? I have only seen a couple that were rate shopping, and I don't have a problem with that because they typically go to their credit union or their bank. Their bank can't touch me. That's I'm giving people better rates than the banks. Michael, you got a lot of people in Phoenix that are upside down. You had a few calls, you said, from people that had just hit, like, NOD or, or they had a bunch of mortgage lates and you couldn't help them. Were you able to find, like, you just kind of refer those off to your realtor partners to try to short sell the house? Or what do you do with those calls? You just kind of tell them, sorry, they, they don't qualify and they go away? Or what, what do you think? Well, you know, I've, I've had a couple that tried to work on loan modifications with their bank because the bank told them that they had to go late. And these are people that 
they can still pay for their mortgage and actually got their mortgages caught up. And so I, I had to tell some of them, I'm sorry, I can't do anything right now. Uh, you know, uh, I'll talk to you in a year. Right, right. And then, then I've had a couple of others that are are struggling to make ends meet, and I got to refer with caution. And I, I did give them uh, a realtor's number so that they could, you know, talk to a real estate agent about selling their property. Uh, I have a couple that are still unsure of whether they want to sell the house. You know, it's the, the husband said, "I'm going to sell before we go late," and the wife, "I don't want to sell." So there's family squabbles over what they're going to do with the property at, at that point in time. But, you know, I, I let them know, hey, listen, you want to sell your home? Um, you know, especially there's a couple that even had equity in the home. I said, you know, take that equity, put it down on a new home. I'll do your new home loan. That's great. Nice. Well, thanks for sharing that with us, with us, Michael. I'd like to bring in David. David's out in Massachusetts, just near the Rhode Island border. Is that David? Yeah, I'm here, yep. Great. Well, talk to us what it's like out there on the East Coast, because we just heard from uh, Michael on the West Coast. Uh, talk to us a little bit more about what, what's happening out in your market. Uh, you know, yeah, it doesn't sound like everybody's upside, you know, as much. Um, I'm running into average LTVs. Everybody, I mean, most of my clients are still upside down, but most of them are between 105 to 120, 125. I do have a couple that are uh, in the pipeline in the 140 LTV range. Um, but I did about um, I did 2,000 letters, and I really concentrated in my local county. Uh, mm -hmm. And the and the call response was was pretty pretty overwhelming. It's just myself. I really don't have a team or anybody helping me with the calls. But I, I probably fielded anywhere from 50 to 60 calls. Um, I'm closing my first one on Friday, and uh, I have about eight in the pipeline, eight solid ones. They're all approved eligible. Um, the one thing I really liked about it was the fact that it was so local. A few of the clients that I got in my office were people I know. Um, <laughs> That's great. It, it was, it's great. You know, my kid's t-ball coach walked in my office, a couple of people I went to high school with. Uh, so it really, you know, set myself apart from the competition, the fact that I was really local. I even had a client that was so local, he walked to my office with his docs. Um, so it, it, it's, the, the response ratio was great, and uh, I'm having similar experiences uh, as, uh, as Michael. Uh, you, you said Michael, right? Right. Uh, most of my clients are all, you know, FICOs of 7, 720, 750. I do have a couple that you know, or that went through with a 620. Um, I'm a mortgage broker, so I'm able to wholesale with uh, a lot of lenders, GMAC, for example. I have an EA3, uh, and GMAC will take it because it's their own paper. Uh, so, th and that one's a, a real pro. They're all actually real profitable. Um, I think, out, you know, I think out of the, uh, the eight loans, I'm probably looking to generate about 40000 in revenue combined between just the eight units and uh, I'm getting ready to you know send out another couple of thousand uh, I'm at the point now where everything is pretty much everything is submitted I got more than half of them approved I got two of them clear to close uh, I was really impressed with the, the response ratio and um, every single call that I checked every single one was owned by Fannie Mae Every, there wasn't one that came back that was not owned by Fannie Mae. So when he tells you, he guarantees you that, you know, they're all scrubbed against the Fannie Mae list. He's 100% accurate, you know, with, with that information. Um, I, you know, I, I, I'm are so you, glad. Are you doing any stuff with, David, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but are you, in, are yeah. you doing anything with Freddie Mac? I mean, is there anything, have you experienced that at all? Because I've heard there's been some frustrations and it's been a lot harder to get Freddie deals done. You know, I got one, actually, I got my second Freddie Mac deal in the pipeline, and uh, it is frustrating to do the Freddie Mac deals. Uh, they're not as friendly with giving you property inspection waivers. Um, I've had Freddie, I got a Freddie Mac deal right now, 780 FICO, 50K reserves, 29 DTI, 
for some reason it won't accept the file. It will accept the file at a 20-year term. When I reduce the term, it'll accept it. Uh, and, and that's the only option the client has. But And they're taking it, so you know it's a working loan that I have. But I have a couple of other ones that I just, you know, I just can't get through the system. I mean, from what I understand, though, Freddie Mac is updating their uh, their system over the next week or so. So if you have yeah. any Freddie Mac deals, you know, rerun them in a week and a half or so. I'm told that uh, there's going to be a lot more flexibility in the results. Hey, I want That's to say great. something real quick, guys. I um, somebody told me the other day that they're running some some Freddie, what is it, LP or DOs or whatever they call them, and. Uh, if their credit card balances were over 50% utilized on their balance, that was messing up their approval. So they were paying some credit cards down under 50% of their balance, and all of a sudden they were getting approvals. I didn't think credit card debt and, and balances ratios compared to limits would have anything to do with getting a, you know, a Freddie Mac deal approved, but I was, you know, they said that it did. That was the only difference. And something else I heard from one of my clients the other day I just want to throw out there to everybody is that I guess Quicken Loans is, is you know, doing wholesale, right? And, and Quicken Loans will write a loan term, not 30, 25, or 20, but odd numbers. Like you can write a loan term at 17 years, 23 years, you know, 29 years. I mean, they're kind of an interesting, a lot of people don't want to start over on their 30-year amortized mortgage. So if they've got 24 years left, Quicken will write a 24-year mortgage, which I thought was kind of interesting. In fact, Dave, you know who told me that was the other client that bought the mailer in Rhode Island, Michelle. She was the one yeah, who told yeah. me that. I just remember. Yeah, we work with Quicken. We do a ton of those with Quicken. I mean, I'm not promoting Quicken. I don't know how they are uh, at all on a wholesale basis, but I like the thought of rewriting the mortgages to an odd term. And gosh, this is just big news that you could lower the the loan term and get a totally different approval out of DU and LP. I forgot about that. I need to share that with my other clients that are, you know, they got 50 deals on their desk and trying to make sense of them all. And you know to get a few more loans funded, that, that's a big deal. So I appreciate well, I you sharing that. Thanks, and to, thanks to David and uh, thanks to Michael for sharing your experience with us. I mean, these individuals are not paid to come on this presentation. They've just been happy customers, and we just invited them to share their experience because we, you know, we want to be able to uh, take away the risks from the people that are considering this option to be able to take advantage of this Hard 2.0 marketing campaign that Jeff developed. Jeff, talk to him a little bit more. I've got a uh, poll up here, and if anybody would like more information, please go ahead and cast your vote now, and then I'll go ahead and have Jeff. Why don't you just wrap up and tell uh, everybody on the webinar what their next steps need to be if they want to uh, move forward with uh, marketing to some of these HARP, guaranteed HARP loan candidates. Well, early bird gets the worm on this deal. I mean, I really appreciate Michael and David stepping up and buying this campaign from me like two months ago when I had no references. I had nothing to tell these guys except, hey, I got a hot list and a great letter, and I know it's going to work. So they both stepped up and paid me, you know, without having anybody to call. So I really appreciate that. Um, you know, the guys that go first just get a lot of the, you know, the best response and get all the low-hanging fruit. So, you know, I, I guess in finishing, Dave, I would just say to, to have, have them, you know, call us. We can run counts, tell them exactly how many Fannie Mae owned mortgages are in every zip code in a radius around them, you know, by county, by state. So we'll show them the counts. We'll show them two or three letters if they like this letter, if it's worked well, or if they want to do something different. They want to put their picture on it, you know, we can do all that on the letters. And uh, let's get something printed and mailed and, you know, get you 25 to 50 phone calls and another, you know, 10 deals for, for next month, you know. Uh, that, you that's bet. my well, suggestion. So. If anybody has any further questions, you can give us a call at 888-212-4343, or you can just visit us on the web at overflowworks.com. Thanks, Jeff. Thanks, Michael. And thanks, David, for participating today. And we wish you all the very best of success. Take care, everybody. Thanks. Take care. Have a good day, guys. Thanks.